in this video I will be talking about the cubic discriminant. So for a general cubic polynomial, ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d equals zero. The discriminant for this polynomial is quite lengthy, but it is the discriminant or delta is equal to 18 a b c d minus 4 b cubed d plus b squared c squared minus 4 a c cubed minus 27 a squared d squared so this is the discriminant for the general cubic polynomial and for a depressed cubic x cubed plus px plus q is equal to zero the discriminant is much more nicer which is delta is equal to negative 4 p cubed minus 27 q squared so Let's look at the general case for the general cubic, as it also applies to the depressed cubic as well. So, for the nature of the roots, pretty much, if we see the discriminant and how it affects the solutions, we see that we have quite a lot of cases where we could get specific roots, whether it's one solution, two solutions, or three. But for the discriminant when it is greater than zero, the discriminant or the cubic has three real roots. Real distinct roots. Roots. And for when the discriminant is equal to zero, this is a bit more complicated than it is for the quadratic but we see that it either has two or three repeated roots and for when the discriminant is less than zero the cubic has one real root and two complex roots. And the two complex roots are conjugates of each other. So we see that for dis the discriminant, when it's greater than zero, it is pretty straightforward. And when the discriminant is less than zero, it is also pretty straightforward. But the case we want to mainly look at is for when it is equal to zero. We see that here, obviously, it has two or three real repeated roots. So let's go ahead and see what the second case is for when the discriminant is equal to zero. So when we have a cubic x cubed plus 3x squared plus 3x plus 1, it is equal to zero. This is a perfect cube, as it is x plus 1 cubed. And every perfect cube has a discriminant of 0. So x plus u cubed is equal to 0. Always had the, a discriminant of 0. So whenever this is the case, when the discriminant is 0 and it is a perfect cube, it is always going to be the solution is always going to be x is equal to minus b over 3a, which in this case, b is 3. And we see that if we just evaluate the second step, which is the perfect cube, the solution is x equals to negative 1. But using this formula as well, the minus b over 3a, looking at b, which is 3, we get that x is equal to negative 3 over 3. And a is 1, which also gives negative 1. So... It doesn't matter how we get the solution, it just shows that we get the same solution. All three solutions are repeated. So, 
for perfect cubes, it will always have a discriminant equal to zero and three repeaters roots. And now for the cubic, well, the pressed cubic x cubed minus three x plus two is equal to zero. If we look at the discriminant, since the pressed cubic is easier to deal with, we have the discriminant is equal to negative four p cubed minus 27 q squared. We have p and q being negative three, so we have negative four times negative 27 minus 27 times four. So here we have the negatives cancel out, so we have four times 27 minus 27 times four, and this equals to zero. But here we notice that this does not have three repeated roots because b is equal to zero in this case. So we end up seeing that our solution cannot be minus b over three a. Rather, we have to solve for the solution, or we could just factor it out. And the solutions to this cubic are x is equal to 1 and negative 2. And we could prove that by just plugging in 1. 1 is 1 cubed is 1, and 3 times, or negative 3 times 1 is negative 3, and 1 plus 1 is 3, so 3 minus 3 is 0. And for 2, it is just negative 8 plus 6 plus 2, and that equals to 0. So the cubic is written as x minus 1 squared times x plus 2. Now let's go ahead and look more into the second case where we have the two repeated roots or three repeated roots when the discriminant is equal to 0. So we mainly care about the, when the discriminant is equal to zero because it has either two or three repeated roots. So one thing to also note is that we could also write the discriminant as delta is equal to four times b squared minus 3ac cubed minus 2b cubed minus 9abc plus 27a squared d all squared all over 27a squared. So here we can notice a few things right off the bat. We see that we have b squared minus 3ac, and that is one of our discriminants, and 2b cubed minus 9abc plus 27a squared d is our second discriminant. So here the cubic has two minor discriminants, but they all are a part of the general main discriminant. So one thing that we need to know is that if delta one is equal to zero, so is delta two. So let's go ahead and look at the cubic x cubed plus three x squared plus three x plus one is equal to zero. So plugging in a, b, c, and d, we see that we have b is equal to 3, c is equal to d, and d is equal to 1, and a is equal to 1. But we don't really need to include a because it is just 1. So let's look at delta 1, which will be 3 squared minus 3 times 3, and this is the same thing as 9 minus 9, and that is equal to 0. So by that definition, that means that our second discriminant will also be 0. But let's go ahead and verify that. We have 2 times 3 cubed, which is 27, and minus 9 times b is 3 and c is 3, so bc is 9, and plus 27 times 1, which is just 1, 
or just 27. And here, after expanding, we get 54 minus 81 plus 27. And this is also equal to 0. So we see that the discriminant is also equal to 0. And one thing that we need to also know to be sure that the cubic has a repeated root is if and only if b squared is equal to 3ac. Here we can see that it is 9, it is equal to 9 as we saw here. 9 minus 9 is equal to 0, so 9 is equal to 9. So with this cubic we see that we have a triple root, meaning that the first solution, second solution, and third solution are all equal, so that means that x is equal to minus b over 3a. So we now understand slightly how to tell if we have a repeated root. It's just a simple check of checking if b squared is equal to 3ac. Now let's go we'll also check if we have either two repeated roots or three. So now let's go ahead and test another example and check the discriminant. So for the cubic x cubed minus 5x squared plus 8x minus 4 is equal to 0, we will go ahead and check if it has either a triple repeated root or a double repeated root. So the easiest way to do that is again by checking if b squared is equal to 3ac. So we see that b is equal to 5 so we have 25 and 3 times 1 times 8 is 24 so our cubic does not have a triple repeated root. So we see that our discriminant is going to be, or for delta 1, it is 1. So we see that we have 4 times 1 cubed, that is 4, because 25 minus 24 is equal to 1. And delta 1 is equal to 1. So now let's go ahead and look at our delta 2. And seeing that we plug in everything, 2 times negative 5 cubed, that is minus 125, minus... 9 times 1 times negative 5 times 8, that is 9 times 40, or negative 40, which is positive, 360. And 27 times negative 4, that is minus 108. And 2 times 125 is 250. Since it's negative, it's negative 250, plus 360, minus 108. Combine the negatives, we get negative 358 plus 360, and that is equal to 2. So delta 2 is equal to 2, and since it is squared, 2 squared is 4, and we have minus 4 is equal to, or over 27, and 4 minus 4 is equal to 0, so the whole discriminant is equal to 0. So this tells us that we have a double repeated root. And the way to get the solution of the repeated roots is if you look at b squared does not equal to 3ac and the discriminant is equal to 0. So we see here in this case that there is a double repeated root and to find that double repeated root it is simply x is equal to 9ad minus bc over 2 times b squared minus 3ac. And the simple root, which is our distinct root that is not a repeated root, it is going to be 4abc minus 9a squared d minus b cubed all over a times b squared minus 3ac. So let's go ahead and check for our roots. 
so for our Peter's brew, we will plug in B, C, and D. Since A is 1, we see that we have 9 times negative 4 minus 5, which is plus now. And 5 times 8 is 40 divided by 2 times 1 since b squared, well, delta 1 is equal to 1, so it is just over 2. And here we have negative 36 plus 40 over 2. That gives us 4 over 2, which is 2. So we see here that our repeated root is x equals 2. And for our single root, we just have to plug in a, b, c, and d. And after doing that, we see that we have 4 times 40, or negative 40, minus 36, or plus 36, and plus 125, all over 1. So we just ignore that denominator, and we have negative 160 plus 161 and that is equal to negative or positive 1. So x is also equal to 1. So let's go ahead and verify our two solutions. So 1 cubed is 1 and then minus 5 plus a to minus 4 and we have 1 plus 8 is 9 and five minus, negative five minus four is negative nine, so that is equal to zero, so we see that x equals one is a solution. Now let's check x equals two. Two cubed is eight, and then five times four is negative 20, and then plus 16 minus four. And then eight plus 16, that is 24, and negative 20 minus four, that is negative 24, and that is equal to zero as well. So we see that x equals two is also our solution. So that tells us that x equals 2 is our repeated root. So x minus 2 squared times x minus 1 is our solution to the cubic. You could also go ahead and use the formula, but that will be much more longer. So as we see here, we could also just use the method that we use is pretty much using the values of the polynomial itself and testing discriminant 1 to see if it is a triple repeated root or a double repeated root. So that was pretty much it for this entire video. I'll see you in the next video.